Hello and welcome! It is Gauntlet of Greatness playoff time. I'm Randy Bueller, joined by Shadow Nutella. What we've got queued up now is the Jace match. The Jace right. match. The Jace match. The bracket came out. The one seeds were randomly paired against the two seeds. Remember, this tournament is 16 of the best standard decks of all time. Throwing down, trying to see which one is the best. We divided everybody up into four groups of four. Now the top two from each group has advanced into the playoffs. And Mythic won its group. Callblade took second, and they got drawn together. So which is the best shell for Jace the Mind Sculptor? Well, one way to find out is to bash them against each other. So that's what we're going to do here. Callblade against Mythic. All right, here is a good look at the Mythic deck. Now, the shtick here is Sovereigns of Lost Alara allows you to go get Eldrazi Conscription out of your deck. Plus 10, plus 10, Trample, and Annihilator too. Although, putting it into play with the Sovereigns, you don't get the Annihilator on that very first turn, but whatever. Birds and Noble Hierarchs and Lotus Cobras allow you to accelerate into the Sovereigns pretty quickly and then just attack with whatever random thing is left over, get the Exalted Trigger, crush the opponent. Uh, meanwhile, you know, the backup plans here are just fine. Knight of the Reliquary, Elspeth Knight Errant, and four copies of Jace the Mind Sculptor. The uh, other side of this matchup, Callblade also has four copies of Jace, and also has kind of degenerate card advantage combos. This is a Stoneforge Mystic deck, right? This deck is not only Jace, it's also four copies of Stoneforge Mystic to get the Batter Skull or the Swords. And then Squadron Hawks provide random card advantage as well. Um, it's got a little more permission and, you know, a little more interactivity than the ramp deck. Um, feels like maybe more consistent, right? The cards are a little bit cheaper, um, but the ramp deck, the cards are a little more explosive. So could be a pretty interesting match. I'm going to, well, we'll see what happens. I'm going to go set up a match. I am hosting a match for you sh to join, Shadow. Sounds good. All right, I will put you and Sylvia on mute, and we will sure. talk more after the game. Bye, Sylvia. Sounds good. Good luck. Good luck. Here we go. Time to find out our quarter, our semifinalist. Winner of this will take on the winner of the match between Necro and Mono Black Devotion. Which, if you're watching on the live stream, we played first, but if you're watching on the videos, I will avoid spoiling in case you haven't watched it yet. He won the die roll. All right. This sure looks good. We'll see how fast it goes, but I mean, it's bird into Lotus Cobra into Planeswalkers. Doesn't really give me any way to prevent him from doing anything, but but the things I'm doing are pretty good. Bird of Paradise, here we go. Yeah, don't forge mystic. So ridiculous. Now he's got a batter skull. And there's not a whole lot I can do about that. The batter skull is just coming down next turn, isn't it? What can I do here? I mean, I can't get to a planeswalker, so I just play Lotus Cobra. And get through the... Comes into play tapped portion of one of these lands. It looks so innocuous. She doesn't look like she should be this ridiculous. And yet, not only is she going to put Batterskull into play, but 
instance B during my end step where I can't even bounce the germ token with Jace. How do I do this? All right. It's Jace, obviously. I can, I can play a String Wildwood and still have four mana because of the Cobra. What am I actually doing with Jace, though? Like if I bounce Stoneforge Mystic, then Batterskull just comes down. That doesn't accomplish anything. I mean, I guess I can play Elspeth, make a token to block with, and then play Jace next turn. Because I'm going to need to block the Batterskull. Yeah, I think maybe that's the way I do it. Try to make a string of blockers for Jace. Alright, let's do it that way. activates, here comes Batter Skull. <laughs> of course, he has a Jace of his own. Yeah, bounce the token. Elspeth can take a hit, though. Can I just let Elspeth go to four? Take four, down to one? Oh, interesting. And then, I'm not afraid... Yeah, I feel like if I'm going to bounce this, he's got the ability to pick up Batterskull. I don't want him to be able to put it in cheap and instant speed. So... I'm going to let Lotus Cobra trade with Stoneforge Mystic. Let Elspeth take four. And now I get to play Jace and bounce the Germ token. Oh, and play Normal Hierarch. making one once. That turn felt okay. Oh, I could have killed Jace by having Elspeth turn the bird into an attacker. That would have been better than playing Double Hierarch. Wow, that was pretty bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I messed that up. Attack with the bird, kill the Jace. That was terrible. Still a good turn, but it should have been better. Willing to attack with no Stoneforge Mystic, he's got a backup. Fair enough. Now what? He's just done, right?
three new squadron hawks. Okay. So I think I bounced the Squadron Hawk so that I can kill Jace. I don't think I can kill Jace without bouncing Squadron Hawk, right? I mean, higher, I can attack with one, get an Exalted Trigger, attack as a 2-2, but the Dunn Force can block. Kill Jace the Mind Sculptor. And now, do I play my backup Jace so that I can get a Brainstorm? I, mean, I wouldn't have minded killing the Stoneforge in a trade, but I, I wanted to make sure I killed the Jace. That felt important. Oh, I could have played Noble Hierarch and done it with a bird and two exalted triggers. I kind of imagined myself shuffling this Noble Hierarch back in. And if I play this other Jace, then I get a Brainstorm and I get a couple loyalty counters. I think I like that. Now we have Mana Leak. So I have Misty Rainforest. So I throw back what? Land Hierarch? Play the Misty, hold up Mana Leak? Or do I just play Knight of the Reliquary? What does Mana Leak do? We know that he's got a bunch of Squadron Hawks and a sword in his hand. Not really gonna mana leak. Not really gonna mana leak a squadron hawk. I'm not gonna get to. And I don't get to mana leak the equipment, so I think I just play knight. Mana Leak would stop Jace, I guess. He's got a, he's got a second Jace. I will regret this line. Of course, he has a second Jace. Oh no, he's just gonna quit Batter Skull. Okay. Interesting. Five mana equip Batter Skull. Huh. Is that what I thought he was going to go with this? He's attacking Jace. It's funny, if I'd gone the Noble Hierarch attack with Bird, I could have a 1 1 soldier token to block with, but then he wouldn't have gone down this line. So I have to chunk block, right? I'd rather have a Jace in play than a Knight of the Reliquary in play. Alright. Not the best sequence for me, but. These things happen. Could have let Jace die. What the hell is going on now? Now I bounce Stoneforge Mystic? Like he's running out of equipment to go get. He's already got his Batter Skull. He's already got the good sword. There's one sword left in his deck. I feel like I can bounce Stoneforge Mystic here and just not care. Yeah, I can totally bounce Stoneforge Mystic.
crazy. And what? He's working so hard to kill this Jace, I don't think I play this one yet. I can fire up Celestial Colonnade. Elspeth is probably going to make a 1-1 one -one here. And... If I do this, I don't have Mana Leak for Jays, so I don't want to do that. Wild Lord can get there while still having Mana Leak mana. Of course, a threat to attack me. Um, I'm gonna allow Stoneforge. Just get the other sword, but at some level, I'm attacking the creature's piece of this. I feel like I'm way ahead. Could mana leak a squadron hawk and he can just play another one. I'm not gonna do it. He's already got all the squadron hawks in his hand. Do I keep flooding the board with 1-1s? One I think I keep flooding the board with 1-1s. One well, I'm going to brainstorm first. I mean, he's got the ability to kill this Jace next turn, but it's not. I'm not that worried about it because I have my own Jace. Hello! Sovereigns have lost Alara. He's got Mana Leak mana. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 mana. So I cannot Sovereigns with Mana Leak back up. That sure looks like a mana leak. It sure feels like, I and mean, we know he has Squadron Hawk in his hand. So he's worried about, he's worried about my ability to play Sovereigns. And for good reason. I should try to see if I can set up mana leak back. It feels like I can. If I play this Noble Hierarch, then I can leave up mana leak. I can, in fact, mana leak on his turn, untap mana leak to defend my sovereigns. All right, so I need the sovereigns next turn. I need the I need the mana leak now. I bury like Elspeth Jace. Sure. Attack with Stirring Wildwood while leaving up Mana Leak. May as well let it pick up the Exalted Triggers because I don't want to attack with one ones in the Stone Forge. Now what? It's got a tech edge over there. Oh, now he's going to sit on Stoneforge Mystic Mana. Hmm. 
can attack Jace for one. Okay. Wow. Now if he mana leaks, he can pay. Huh. I guess he's set up to pick up Batter Skull and replay it. Right? One, two, three, one, two. He's also set up to tech edge any creature land that I attack with. I mean, I'm nowhere near Sovereign's Mana League, Mana League. So what happens if I let him do this? If I let him pick up Batter Skull and replay it... Hmm. We're in the top eight of this Historical Standard Tournament. My Jace the Mind Sculptor deck, his Jace the Mind Sculptor deck, both made the top eight. Only one of them will make the semifinals, though. <sighs> Certainly two of the best decks in the history standard. Does he ever need to tap mana in his turn? I don't know. I'm going to brainstorm. I want some more cards. It's not the end of the world if Jace dies. If I have another. I found a fetch land. So I shuffle away the backup of Elspeth and the Colonnade. Playing this fetch land. Feels reasonable. I make more one ones. And I mean, he's in a position where he can tap a bunch of mana, make the squadron honk big. He can be wearing a sword, he can be wearing a batter skull. Good play backup chase. I could. I can play sovereigns, but the mana leak isn't going to stop anything. what I can do. I just, I don't really want to act into all that untapped mana. I guess I could have used Jace to bounce Mystic and force him to respond. Just drawing extra cards is so good. And at some level, if the board just keeps going like this. Like, him getting this batter skull down isn't even that insane. Because I can trade for the germ token. And eventually my stuff's going to get indestructible. He's got to have counter magic of his own. What, I can pay for a mana league right now. I can go sovereigns. He has to mana leak. One, two, three, four, five, six. If he mana leaks, I pay. I essentially can trade sovereigns for two counters and then reshuffle and see what's going on. That doesn't sound terrible. And then I made him spend mana. He doesn't get to do so much of his batter skull shenanigans. Let's try this. Yeah, 
attack into that as a response. I'll get mana. Wow. That is surprising. I guess he must have into the royal or something. All right. Show me what you got. Yeah, it looks like into the royal. This is okay with me. Not expecting sovereigns to get to resolve. I mean, I guess his plan is he must have into the royal. He must have a build, the ability to bounce him. He's just trying to decide what he wants to bounce. This gives me a reshuffle off my jays. I don't have to use my fetch land. Yes. I'm gonna try. Alright, but now I have Sovereigns in play. He's going to run out of those eventually. I know that he can pay for this, but then he has to, right? If he does pay for this, then he's tapped out. Which is very valuable to me. I have no idea why I didn't mana leak the into the royal. I should have mana leaked the into the royal. I mean he may have a uh, a spell pierce, but whatever. I should have leaked and made him show me a spell pierce. And I'm just clicked too fast. Didn't think about it. So he did have the spell pierce. We could have had this exchange previously. Would have worked out the same way. So now he's down to blue and one. Wow, he's got a brainstorm. So he's brainstorming, he's not bouncing Sovereign. So he's gonna let me attack with Sovereigns again. I mean, I have another, I have a second copy of Eldrazi Conscription, and I have a second Mana Leak. Of course, me Mana Leaking means the Squadron Hawk does get to kill Jace, but I have a backup Jace, which I've kind of been playing for the whole time. I only have one more copy of Eldrazi Conscription, so if he gets to bounce the next one. That would be bad. But like... Isn't he almost dead? Yeah, I have no flyer left. Okay. How close is he to dead? 
Oh, wow. You're going to get something pro color randomly. So if I attack with Sovereigns, that's four. Exalted Triggers is five, six, seven. Elspeth is eight, nine, ten. Eldrazi Conscription is 20. I just attack him for 20 with Sovereigns of Lost Alara, and we're done, right? What am I missing? I don't think I'm missing anything. I could play Jace to bounce Squadron Hawk so they can't block. I mean, it's funny. The one point of toughness actually matters. But I don't need to. Oh, I can't give it Pro White and then target it with Elspeth. That was close. Um... So we lost Alara. To have protection from white, yeah. Seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty. Crazy game. Whew. Crazy game. Managed to stick a sovereigns is the short version of that game. Sovereigns have lost Alara. This is so much damage. I just only had to hit him once. Yeah, I don't know. Like Jace is on both sides and the batter skulls. Don't know if I played that optimally, don't know if he played that optimally, but I managed to maneuver it around to a Sovereigns. I mean, I, my Jace got to stick for a couple of turns, so that felt pretty good. Naturalizes obviously come in, blow up his various equipments. I think I like Spell Pierce here. I feel like we are going to get into these counter magic battles and run each other out of mana. Then the question is, what do I take out? And that is just a lot less clear. I, I think Explore is not the mana ramp I'm looking for. I think Birds and... Hyrox and Lotus Cobra are. But then it's one of the last two. Like, is Knight of the Reliquary good? It's okay. It's maybe a little on the big side. I mean, it's it's all about the Sovereign's combo is what I have to be. So I'm going to bring in Naturalizes. I'm going to bring in a little more Permission. And then I'm just going to trim around the edges of the stuff that isn't the Sovereign's combo. Okay. Let's see what happens. Just 20 you. Game one to Mythic. Yeah, it is a little weird that these situations couldn't have happened at the time. Like, the Planeswalker rules have certainly changed since these decks were around. I don't know. I mean, lots of rules have changed over the years. Damage used to the stack for a while. Death used to be checked instantaneously. Still basically the same game. No, no, no. I mean, I could imagine someone having a tournament where they're just like, okay, historical standard tournament. Pick a date and then, like, build the optimal deck based on the legality there for this tournament. It might actually change things. Wow, so this hand is a bunch of ramp. It doesn't go anywhere. But, like, the Cobra attacks for four and I have a mana leak. I think I keep this. Like, I really want something big. I want to draw a Jace or an Elspeth or a Sovereigns. But, I mean, I think this is good enough to keep. Because it does a little bit with the Permission and the Lotus Cobra. I was just thinking to myself, just don't play Stoneforge Mystic. Anything but Stoneforge Mystic and we're fine. Like, if I'm on the draw, I can. there's nothing I can possibly do about a turn two Stoneforge Mystic. Now he just has a Batter Skull. Huh. I slam Knight of the Reliquary? Like, these permission doesn't do anything now. Um, oh, I can actually... So I go Lotus Cobra into Fetch Land, sack it. I can get the Lotus Cobra and the Knight down. That's got to be right. The third land off a mulligan, but none of that is going to stop Batterskull from coming down, is it? 
Now, Knight can attack into that and be okay. Not any special lands that do anything, right? Because even, even Lotus Cobra, if I play the Hierarch, would trade. My only question with Knight is, is there something cool I'm supposed to be doing with Knight of the Reliquary in terms of fetching up random utility lands? I don't think so. Colonnades. It's just Sajiri step, which isn't super useful here. I mean, there's a Bachuka Bog in the sideboard, but I obviously didn't bring that in. I think I just attack, right? I mean, it doesn't answer the batter skull. It doesn't even race the batter skull. But it makes me feel better about the batter skull. Yeah, I mean, basically, I need to draw a Jace. I need to draw an anything. Like, we're in the same position we were. Knight of the Reliquary is a little something something, but we don't actually win this race. Damn it. I guess I can leave Knight on defense. I can grow it. Yeah, I think we'll try that. I'll attack with the Lotus Cobra. So he can trade if he wants to. And if he doesn't want to trade, then I've got Knight available to block, and I can actually sacrifice two lands on my turn. Because I can use the Knights, I can block, tap, sack a forest to get a fetch land, sack the fetch land to get something, wind up with three lands in my graveyard. Yay! And it's actually lets me block Batter Skull. Seems good. Uh, any reason not to put Lotus Cobra into play? Any reason not to put Lotus Cobra into play? I still have up both Mana Leak and Spell Pierce. You just randomly drew a sword. I'm sitting on Mana Leak Spell Piers, and you just randomly drew your other Batter Skull. Lame. Stoneforge Mystic, good. I'm okay. I, I mean, I don't, I'm not dead. I mean, two Batter Skulls is annoying, but like this knight is going to be bigger than the germ tokens momentarily. Yeah, I can even get Sejiri stuff if I need it. Although it feels like Misty into Island is the better play. Right, I can mana leak and spell Pierce to defend it if he's got a bounce spell. I don't think he gets to attack. That might be what he's figuring out. Oh, jeez. What does that do? It gets a sword? Yeah, that's good enough. No sword of protection from green for you. Go get grow this guy anyway. 
actually how to use the Lotus Cover Magic here, but that's okay. Oh, and I can save the sack on the fetch line for later. <laughs> when it makes like a million mana, kind of hilariously. I'm still willing to trade Lotus Cobra for Germ Token. You're stuck on two lands, so I'm going to keep attacking it with this four power Lotus Cobra. I, I, mean, I don't think I'm going to get there in time, but. I don't know how long it's going to be before you can recycle those batter skulls, so I'm going to make hay while I still can. And then at some point, oust. Hilarious, and he can pay for spell pierce. And if I tap him to get Sejiri's step, then he's tapped and he can't block anyway. <laughs> it's kind of bizarre. I just should get the Sejiri step? Just to keep him in play and preserve my draw steps, right? So, Nothing to do with this blue mana, but I may as well look scary. Do I look scary? He doesn't seem scary. I just double block, right? These Lotus Covers aren't doing anything. I think I killed one. Let the other hit me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Neat. What does Elspeth do? Elspeth lets Knight hit for five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That's a lot. Elspeth can also let the Lotus Cobra hit right away for a lot. I mean, it seems like I hit with Lotus Cobra leaving Knight on defense. And then I think Knight is lethal next turn. If I continue to offer the exchange, maybe I offer the same exchange I've been offering. No, I want the three damage. Yeah, I want the three damage. Uh, do I need to sacrifice land? I guess I don't. Do I need to play a land? I need to do one or the other. I'll play. Seven. And he could have done three more with the knight, but then he would have a batter skull attack, and I wouldn't be capping the knight to go get a fetch land. So I'm pretty sure this is right. Into 
to the Royal on the night. No, thank you. Oh, I forgot to use the knight. God damn it. Forgot to use the knight. Which actually matters. No, it doesn't matter. He's at 12. He can't activate Celestial Colonnade, so 5, 8, 9, 10. It does matter. I just forgot. Forgot to tap the knight and put lands in my graveyard. I'm also a little nervous about another end of the royal. Like, he went through that turn awfully fast for being dead. Yep, one short. Uh, I feel like he's got another end of the royal or something, and I kind of want to keep baiting with Lotus Cobra, honestly. If I jump the knight, it's 8, 9, 10. I can sack this for 11, so I'm just going to keep going with the Lotus Cobra. Don't have another Sajiri step, so no more pro color shenanigans, unfortunately. Condemn. Okay. Yeah, it felt like he had something. Yeah, it's just a thing that happens here. Here, or am I still getting fetch lands? It's not like I have any tech edges or anything. They could be blowing up his lands. Those would be nice. I tech edges. No tech edges. I feel like Colonnade. Right? Yeah, I'm going to get a Colonnade. Sack it here, though. It does get to attack with that, which is annoying. <laughs> Stoneforge gets her read on, too. And yeah, Stoneforge is going to get through. But I'm obviously going to defend Elspeth. I'd like to draw some things other than lands, not going to lie. Sovereigns. Oh, and I'm now, now that I can't play it and attack immediately. <laughs> so close. Who were you every previous turn of the game where you would have been instantly lethal? <sighs> All right. I'm going to play the knight. It's going to work. I mean, I could tap out for sovereigns, but there's not a lot of point in that. I'd rather tap out for the bigger threat. Force him to react to the knight. Man, if I even had a 1-1, one, one, it would have worked. Um, so I think I'm making 1-1s one, now. I think I'm making 1-1s one, now. 
I mean, I can attack with the Hierarch for four. That doesn't feel super relevant. I feel like I need a 1-1. One, one. I need a Knight, and I want more mana. Sure. I've been sitting on this fetch line forever. I mean, I imagined myself drawing a Jace at some point and being able to reshuffle. And if, I think that's a bigger deal than any thinning that I might be able to do. So how many forests do I have? Good lord, have I accidentally run myself out of forests? I was sitting on it waiting for a reshuffle. Maybe that's all it's worth now. Because I have one, two, three. I keep drawing them. One, two, three, four. Great, now I'm out of forests. <sighs> it's kind of annoying, actually. And Jace comes down. We were so winning this game. He just went into the royal, oust into the royal, condemn into the royal. And I had, to, and ran me out of answers. Huh. What do you think? Does he have mana leak? I mean, he probably has mana leak, right? I can't believe this isn't mana. I could save the soldier. I feel like I need to save the soldier anyway. I think I maybe just take five. Yeah, I'm just going to take five. I want to make sure I can kill Jace. And I'd certainly like to be able to cast Sovereigns. He probably doesn't know I'm out, so he probably won't mana leak. I can, like, threaten to pay for mana leak off that. Oh, but I have islands. Yeah, it's going to still get an island, so it is mana. Yeah, now the question is, does he have mana leak? I guess he could also tech edge here. Keep me off six. Still get to kill Jace with Elspeth's soldier token. Yeah, I get to kill Jace, I get to play the Knight, I might get to play a Sovereigns. Makes sense. Mana Leak. That's interesting. Not playing the Sovereigns. So, I'm playing the Knight. I'm leaving up Mana Leak. And I'm killing Jace. Keeps ousting. <laughs> Do I mana leak and he pays? I don't think that accomplishes enough. Maybe it does. If I mana leak, I can't chump the germ. I'm going to lose my Elspeth. But I should sack this. before night goes into my library. Yeah, I'm gonna chump this germ, right? So that I can keep Elspeth alive. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I've been so close to the Sovereigns. We had three Cobras. And a million, and like a fetch land, and a land in hand. Keeping the stone fortress. Yeah, I've got a chop here. I think. 
Yeah, I mean, I'd rather have Elspeth than a Nova Fyrdor. If it does take me off mana leak temporarily. He shows he sure looks like he wants to spend his mana on Stoneforge. Interesting. Took me off white mana now. Actually, kind of happy that his tech edging means his celestial colonnade isn't killing Elspeth. But yeah, here's the other batter skull finally coming back. That's bad. And I've got all the mana leaks in the world do not help me versus this Stoneforge Mystic. I think he's just been there the whole time, right? He, on the play, turn two Stoneforge Mystic. Now can my knight hang out and play? This knight has been the target of, what, two into the royals and two ousts? And I was like not attacking with him so that Lotus Cobra could either condemn. All very hilarious. I mean, obviously I'm blocking. Now what do you got? Oh, it actually works. Now he's got enough mana that he can pick up and replay it all the time is what he's got. <sighs> this is all very hilarious. He's not getting anywhere, but he's sort of maintaining this odd parody and gaining tons and tons of life. Though I am also building up to Sovereigns and I'm building up to Elspeth Alt. Although that one's a little farther away. Cute little loop we have here. I think my Sovereigns of Lost Alar breaks this loop eventually, right? Oh, Celestial Colony. That's annoying. That's really good. Okay, so Elspeth definitely dies. I think I might want to pick off the Mystic. <sighs> if I kill the Mystic, then it becomes much harder for him to recycle these batter skulls. And my mana leak becomes relevant. Yeah, I'm going to block the Mystic. Land, please. That's not a land. Ah, oh, I can cat. I can do the stupid Knight of the Reliquary trick, but it means my Knight of the Reliquary is tapped, which is pretty annoying. I mean, it's better than not playing Sovereigns.
say planes here? I think it, I don't think I want to get. And I could get fetch land, get it out of my library, but 17 versus 16 feels relevant when I'm being attacked by four fours. So I'm gonna get planes here. Finally, we get Sovereigns of Lost Alara. Took long enough, turn 13. But I mean, whatever, all I do this turn is hit him for 12. He's only got two cards, though. Does he have a bounce spell? And I still have my Sovereigns. Sovereigns is even big enough to block a germ token. <laughs> Looks like a man digging for an answer. Wow, are we going to win this game? I just thought we were so dead. I thought we had it, and then I thought we were dead. Into the Royal or Jazz Chase. And I can't keep up friggin' Mana Leak. Yep. Let's add. Okay. I have one conscription left. See, I have to kill Jace. So I'm attacking Jace with what, though? Like, I'm not going to play this Sovereigns. Because I want to have a mana leak for the next Jace. I can play Hierarch. Wait, can I? No, I need to attack with one guy. Just is it the Knight or the Sovereigns? I think it's the Sovereigns. So that if he has an answer, he has to waste it on a less exciting creature. But his answers are bounce spells. I mean, having trample on the knight has value. Oh, especially if I'm attacking Jace, right? I'm not flying. So he can block with eight power. No, I get it either way. I think I attack with sovereigns. Now, next turn, I'm going to attack with an annihilator creature. So maybe it's the knight. I'm going to attack with the knight. And I'm going to attack Jace. Because 20 is not good enough. Even when it's 22. Only overkilled by about 19 loyalty. Are you out of stuff yet? Be out of stuff. Celestial Colonnade is not stuff that's relevant to this board. Be out of stuff. Eight, eight. I guess that can attack. That's funny.
that's the reason I should have put it on Sovereigns and left the Knight on defense. I don't, I don't want to take eight. This doesn't trample. If I draw a land, I can double block with two Sovereigns. I drew a land. I should have an island left, right? Um, oh, but if I double block with two Sovereigns, then I don't have a Mana Leak? It's tricky, actually. Huh. Second Sovereigns actually makes it two turns, too. Right? 20, 21, 22, and he's at 44. Although he's going to gain more life. I'm going to need three turns. I can add Colonnade in with the Sovereigns for the double block. Yeah, if he's going to double block, he's going to attack into Colonnade. So I think I leave up Mana Leak. Biggest issue is if he double blocks, if he attacks into me and I activate Colonnade, then I've taken down Mana Leak by one mana. Huh. Chomp was during Wildwood. Thing is though, this this forces him. If he spends mana, like he can't break up the double block and deal with the knight. So I think this is the play. I stand corrected. If he plays Jace here, I'm going to be hella pissed. <laughs> it's a new Stone Forge, which I would have been able to mana leak. Damn. I don't think he has any clip left, right? Or is he still on a sword to get? He does still have a sword to get. Ugh. I mean, I can't sit on Annihilator and Mana Leak for the entire game, because, like, 8 damage adds up. I'm at 16. That's a nice one. Another twelve twelve. With Mana Leak back up. Surely we've got this now. Surely. Oh my god. Man, I kept on slugging. Ah, ah, such a good that game. Annihilator 2, which is slightly annoying. Yeah. But my kingdom for a mana leak. Oh man. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I was sitting on mana leak, but like I you play Stoneforce Mystic on turn two, and you're just like, nope, none of these things can be countered. Just put yourself into play. No counter spells. 
what a slugfest. Yeah. Like, I had to try to get through all your things. I needed another bounce spell. Like, one more bounce spell, and you can't out Drazzy anymore, you and I have more life like than you. Seven? You went through oust, oust, into the royal, into the royal, to down. Like, you drew a lot. <laughs> also, I had mana leak at many points in the game, although not all of them, to be fair. Ugh. But, like, I had to throw away a tectonic edge on the off chance you had the, uh, the guy, did. because I didn't have a mana leak. I had the guy. In fact, I had the guy with mana leak backup. Yeah, like I couldn't find one, so like I'm like, all right, new plan, but I just yeah, no, could not turn it on. Feast and famine would have been useful. This guy could get through for eleven unblocked. Yeah, that survives for one more turn. So like that, like if this mana was untapped, I think I beat you. Oh, interesting. Because eleven gives you enough life to survive an attack, and then uh, for the win. Yeah, eleven's not enough because at that point it puts me at sixteen. So no, because yeah. you had me down to five, but it was close. Like I wanted, ah, it was really close. <laughs> Crazy, man. Good game, sir. I mean, I realized that was only game two and I was going to have to slug through game three, but <laughs> man. But okay, that was an enjoyable game of Magic. Like I said, I thought this one would be more, more interesting to the viewers, even though I found our previous matchup more interesting intellectually. <laughs> Yeah, no, that matchup's in the details, right? It's in the it's in the little subtle edges with the lands and playing around mana leak and defending this and bouncing that and when do you tap your knights and bounce stuff? It's it's intricate. I don't yes. know which of those decks is favorite. I I felt like I was a dog just because Stoneforge Mystic is so absurd, but Sirens of Lost Alar is kind of absurd too. And I have so much mana acceleration that I can just go to six and you can't really kill it with much. I don't know. Well, I have four dismembers, so... Oh, okay. You're right, you can kill it. I can kill it quite easily. I mean, I found exactly one, but I found a bunch of other things to try to move things around and give me some time to try to punch on through. But Elspeth is really hard for me to punch through. Yeah, yeah, Elspeth was very good. Good games! Good games. Those were fun. Yeah, they were absolutely fun. So I enjoyed it. When we come back, so next week, same time, same place... Same time, same channel. We will play the other half of the quarterfinals. Tinker versus Bargain and Dragonstorm versus Kennedy.